What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, MCJ, back with another video. And this time we're talking about Power Virtual Agents and we're talking about Copilot. So Copilot is a brand new feature, it's another AI feature that's just come to, well, pretty much every Microsoft product that you can think of. It's in Power Apps, it's in Power Automate, it's in Power Virtual Agents that we're going to look at today, it's in a bunch of Office products. And what it is, is it's a way to leverage ChatGPT or GPT framework to automatically do something for you. In the context of Power Virtual Agents, which I'll look at today, it can actually build a bot for you. So AI building a robot. That's not dangerous at all. Anyway, um, what we'll do is we'll run through the features, we'll show you how to turn it on, and we'll give you a live demo of how it all works. Okay, let's jump into it. So I'm in Power Virtual Agents here. Uh, I've got my Wednesday bot that you may remember from my previous video. This is a preview bot, so to activate any of these features, you actually need to go and create a preview bot. Um, so the preview bot is the Unified Canvas bot, it's the AI features and things like that. Um, if you don't use a preview bot, you cannot access this feature at the moment. Once you're in Power Virtual Agents, you can go down to Settings and go down to AI Capabilities. And then you get a list of uh, different capabilities that you have down here. Um, so we've got the boost conversation that we already know about that we covered in the last video. And then we have this bit that says intelligent authoring support with Copilot preview. So this is in preview, it is a preview setting and it is um, something that, that will change and evolve over time. So do use it with a pinch of salt. There are a few issues that I've seen. I'll kind of go through some of those as we go through. So there's nothing to turn on here. It does say that you um, that you can turn off uh, turn this off in the user settings. If I click this, it'll pop up the user settings for me, and it says I can turn this off here, and she's all good. So if I go back to my topics screen, and what I can do is I can use this either um, on, on an existing topic or I can use this in a new, in a new topic. And what you, what this will allow you to do is this will allow you to type in a like a natural language phrase like build a bot to do xyz and it will um, build a bot for you and build in the nodes so let's take a look at how it works so click on new topic and we'll get two options from blank or create with copilot no well, that's cool so click create from copilot it asks us to give a name of the topic so and it even gives us some suggestions of ones that we can try down here so uh, let's let someone order a pizza choosing from common pizza types Accept to user's name, age, and date of birth, and repeat their responses back to them. That's interesting. Click to user's street address uh, and state and zip code. The, the user should be able to try each question up to four times. And we can actually like refresh these as well and, and get different examples. So what we want to do is we want to create a brand new topic for us today. I'm going to say uh, name name your topic. We're going to say um, favorite Marvel superhero. Uh, it's Got a problem with me using you in favorite, but uh, it's because I'm not American. Create create a topic to dot dot dot, and this is where you can actually put in uh, a description of what you want um, the bot to do. So this is where you can put in a description of what, what you want the bot to do. So we can say, um, ask a user what their favorite Marvel superhero is. Um, Ask them if they would like to hear a fact about a Marvel superhero, about uh, Marvel comics, um, uh, and um, uh, what else? What else should we do? Um, say your favorite. Uh, Marvel superhero is Iron Man. Right, so we, we put in a bunch of stuff. We'll see how this works. Um, this is some of these bits are new to me, so we'll we'll try this. So we'll hit create. Your mileage may vary with some of these things. So it says building. It's going to take uh, a couple of minutes or like a few seconds to understand what I've said. Uh, create the relevant nodes, and then just like that. We have this, so uh, let's hit allow here. So we've got a bunch of different triggering phrases. Let's start here. Who's your favorite Marvel superhero? Which Marvel superhero do you like most? What is your favorite Marvel character? 
tell me about your Marvel superhero. So essentially doing just loads of different variations of a triggering phrase for someone to use. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then we, we have the question that we asked. So we asked, what is your favorite Marvel superhero? And it's, it's identifying it's the user's uh, entire response and we're going to save the response as a string and we're saving it as a variable called Marvel superhero. So automatically it knows that we're going to be asking about someone and we're going to save that as a variable. Uh, and it says, would you like to hear facts about, um, about Marvel? And it has a user's response, uh, entire string, and it's like yes or no. This is one of the things that I did uh, I did find is that sometimes it has this issue here where it can't it can't recognize yes or no. And that's mainly because of the type of question it's asking. It's not asking a Boolean yes, no answer. It's asking for like a string and then we have to say it's equal to yes. Um, we, we can change this or we can actually go in here and we can just go uh, yes, no, and we can just chose <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, it's not working anymore. Um, so, so it is. It's not perfect. You still don't have to do some um, uh, some uh, reactions and, and some stuff to this. So we have to change some bits. Um, that's what I mean. Uh, and then we can see the response down here is, "Did you know that my favorite ML superhero is is uh, Iron Man? Is my favorite? Is, did you know that Iron Man is your favorite super Marvel superhero? It's not your favorite. It's my favorite. Um, okay, let's change that. So." You can kind of see that it's it's, it's getting a couple of things uh, not quite right, but but it's it's all good. We can we can uh, we can do some stuff with this, can't we? So, um, so that I think that's really powerful. So it, it's already it's already taking all these all these pieces of data and stuff like that and moving them around um, and figuring out what needs to be questions and what needs to be responses and stuff like that. So we can change this to be a boolean, uh, and we can yeah, mark um, this now, uh, and we can say this is equal to. Well, a few moments later. Let's, uh, so what we'll do is we'll actually give this a try. So if we select a node for a second, uh, and we've got one node selected on the right hand side, uh, what we can do is we can say uh, update question, uh, update question to be a yes, no, boolean. And see if that figures that out. Ah, here we go. So multiple cho choice options, yes, no, and then we can say this is equal to yes in there. So cool. Um, so that's actually that's actually a really good use case for this. So I was trying to figure out uh, what I could do with this and how to switch it. Um, I've not used the I've not used Power Virtual Agents for a little while, so I was trying to figure out whether it needs to be yes or no, etc. And if it was a boolean, but no, it's actually a multiple choice option that they're doing there, and it's automatically updated the question for me based on what I said. So that was actually a case of me not being able to figure out what I was supposed to do with the product, and just typing in what I wanted it to do, and it automatically converted it into the thing that I needed. That is so cool. That is going to save users a lot of time. I was thinking oh, I'm gonna to have to delete this, and I'm like thinking, well, what am I gonna do? And should I record this whole, re-record this whole video? But I could just type into there, and it automatically updated the question for me. How cool is that? And how accessible is that to the masses to build things? So that's one of the cool things about this is that you can actually select nodes, and as you see on the right hand side, this this copilot pane that pops out. You can see it says one node selected, and I could like select another node, um, and it's got three nodes selected, so it's got this node and this node um, selected. And I kind of did that by um, by control and clicking, so I can select multiple nodes like that. And it's selected three nodes here because it's going down this whole left-hand path. So that's that's all really cool. Um, it does have a couple of issues where it can't sometimes understand where to uh, where to put things in. So uh, for instance, if I type in here. Uh, so there's an option down here, summarize the information gathered uh, from the user into a natural crowd. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll click that and we'll hit update. And you can see it populates into that little um, box there. So it takes what's in here and puts it up there. Sometimes I've had issues with this where it doesn't know where to put that adaptive card. So yeah, so instantly it's put the adaptive card in the wrong place. So it's put it here under this right hand node and that's not where we want it. So what we want to do, delete that again. And we'll we'll copy this. Uh, we'll copy this these paths here. Uh, copy. Can I select this one? Select this one. And select this one. No, can't select that one. Okay, let's stick in a 
let's stick in a dummy path here, right? And then we'll select this node, right? And then we'll click summarize here, summarize the information, populate in there, hit update, and it should populate it after that node. So these are some of the little things that you need to watch out for with Tropilot is that sometimes it doesn't know where it's going, and yet we can see it's done in there. Uh, just do that, delete that, and then we'll come in here, and you say you're incompatible, uh, and we'll choose that, okay. Uh, and yeah, it, it's, it's taught with an error, but we can click into it and we can um, we can see there's an error in the expression editor. Uh, ah, okay, yeah, it doesn't know what we're summarizing. So again, one of these things, uh, we're gonna take this, we're gonna take this, uh, and then, oops, I'm gonna zoom out by accident, I'll take that, and then we're going to summarize, and then do that. It's probably gonna stick it in the wrong place, again, but we can kind of show you this working. So what this is what this is doing, ah, cool, I zoomed out a little bit, I'll zoom back in. Um, so, so what we did there was, um, so this is the thing I was talking about is that um, it sometimes comes up with incompatible and you can kind of choose the option again and it kind of goes through the error. Um, so what it was doing there is it didn't know which nodes to summarize the information from. So I didn't select the right nodes, or I didn't select the nodes, and therefore when the adaptive card was here, it didn't know what things it wanted. So as I click in here, we can see the adaptive card editor, and we can see all the different pieces of information it's collecting. So we can say it's an adaptive card, text block, bold, summary, fact set, etc. favorite Marvel superhero, what the value is, fact about Marvel Comics, uh, and then you know return all this in, in a, an adaptive card. So it's automatically built an adaptive card for me, based on these responses. So that's really cool. So how does this how does this look in practice? So we'll hit save at the top. So we need to save this bot first and then we can test this out. So we'll hit save. Cool, we see it saved at the top uh, and we can hit test bot. So we can test and it says, how can I help you today? Um, uh, let's type in something like Marvel superhero. I'm not sure the exact triggering phrase, so we might need to grab one. Uh, oh, what is your favorite Marvel superhero? So my favorite Marvel superhero is Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Would I like to hear a fact about Marvel Comics? Yes, I would. Uh, did you know that, that Iron Man is my favorite Marvel superhero? I don't think that's really a fact. It's more a fact about you, but um, it worries me a little bit. But then do you think adaptive cards? Like summary, favorite superhero of Spider-Man. Uh, fact about Marvel Comics? Yes. So this is a very simple example, but this is a really easy use case for something like this, where you can collect some information and then relay it back to the user. There are so many other things that you can do with Copilot. Um, as you can see, I had, I kind of had some problems with PVA today, and it helped me figure out what I needed to do, like with that Boolean, um, me making it a multi-choice, etc. So really, really cool. Um, other thing to note is that this button up here, the little star button, is edit with Copilot buttons. If you press that, we get the, if we, if we press that, get the little co-pilot pane pop out. Um, so if you are in, ex in an existing topic, you can still edit with co-pilot by clicking this button and then selecting what you want and then typing in what you want. So really, really, really cool example of co-pilot. So all, all of this, all of this is designed to try and make the user experience much simpler for people. So I, I had a problem with PVA today and it fixed my problem for me. It helped me type in what I wanted to do and it automatically fixed it for me. And we've gone through and we've created a bot that um, asks questions, has different branches, collects all the information and puts that into an adaptive card. How cool is that? I keep saying it, I keep saying it, but it's so cool. <laughs> Uh, I, I love this feature. Um, th this is this is going to change the way a lot of people uh, a lot of people build bots because it's 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 further lowering those barriers to entry for for bot building. So I've built a bunch of bots, you know, over the years, various different topics, linked to various different things, some really cool functions. But even I forgot how to make a question have multiple answers. Um, and I was choosing Boolean. I was choosing the wrong thing. So even an experienced user like me can use Copilot and save time building things. So I think this is really gonna revolutionize the way we, we create bots. That combined with the boost conversation that I showed in the last video is really going to help out a lot of users going forward. So what do you guys think? Do you like this feature? Have you seen some of the, some of the small issues that I've seen? 
Um, I'm going to be talking to the product group about uh, a couple of these things to, to make sure they're aware of some of these bugs that I found. They probably already are, but again, this is in preview, so it's you know bugs are to be expected. But what do you guys think? Are you have you used this yet? Are you excited about this? Is this going to make it easier for your users to make bots in the future? Let me know in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, if you could like it and share it with a friend, that would be great. And I'll see you in the next one.